Hello, and welcome back to the adventures of Mike and his new friend. What is your name, anyway? Aloth, our new friend wizard elf. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, we're not alone out here anymore. <laughs> At least for now. We got some villagers over here. Were these the villagers that were messing with you, Aloth? That's fine. We're not going to lay the beat down on them quite yet. Who is this? You ever been to Defiance Bay? With roads like they are, I'll stay put. Careful if you head east, guards patrol the Eston Woods? What is it? My goodness, guards. I kind of want to kill those guards, because I kind of have a bloodlust for anything that actually moves. However, our current goal is to get to this inn. And sometimes you have to let your bloodlust just, just take a back seat while you go and actually do what you're supposed to. Who is this? Villager? Villager? I don't want to talk to peasants. You're all worthless to me. Who else? Pashka. You seem like an interesting person. Who are you? Ah, oh, greetings. Welcome to the Black Hound Inn. The innkeeper bows her head curtly. Please, sit where you like. Would you like a drink or a room? We have two available at the moment. I'm afraid we can't afford much by the way of good meal today. She sighs. Unless you're fond of cold porridge. Um, cold porridge? What the heck is wrong with this place? This is not a legitimate town! What is wrong with you people? Cold porridge, that's it for a, an adventurer who's been killed by wolves? My goodness. Ah, I could use some reliable help. Do you know anyone looking for work? I'd like to know more about the Black Hound. I would, actually. What's the history? Really? Well, let me see. The actual building's been here for years, but the Black Hound's fairly new. We get a lot of new faces in here, too. Fewer than we used to, I'll admit. I used to work the tables, actually, until the old owner up and left. Nobody's sure what happened to him. He might be in the tree, friend. Even left his poor hound behind. That's the name, see? The Black Hound? It's still sitting upstairs, pining after him. Poor old girl. Oh, what a sad dog. We're gonna have to go meet that dog. Meet and greet. Place ended up in my hands somehow. <laughs> my very own inn. A lot of hard work involved. It's been worth it's been worth it so far. Oh really, has it? You've only got porridge? You only serve porridge. Aloth looks at you and shakes his head quickly. Uh, uh, isn't by choice, I assure you. We used to serve some of the finest meals in Direwood. Oh, we've had a damned, damnable run of luck. It's been a bad season for the crops and we're running low on supplies. Uh, I see. Well, that's, that's understandable. I sent Tenfrith up north to stock up. Tenfrith's our cook, you see. An artist with a... An artist with a good roast. It's been days since he was supposed to return, and we haven't seen any sign of him. You know, I happen to know exactly where your little cook is, actually. He's not having the best time. We're gonna go save him soon enough. She sighs again. I've only just taken over from the last owner myself, and I don't know what I'll do if he doesn't turn up. I could try to find him for you. Really? I'd be grateful to you if you did. He was traveling through Valewood. It's probably nothing a broken wheel, maybe. No, no, he's been captured by bandits. It's not the best, really. You see him safely home, and I think everyone in here would sing your praises. Nobody much likes my porridge. No, I wouldn't think so. I need some help. Where can we find work? Hmm, well, I wouldn't say I can speak from experience, but we do have certain sorts coming by looking for work from time to time. If you want to hire someone on, I'll be happy to send them your way. Ah, let me see what I have to work with. A level one adventurer for 250 CP. Interesting. Interesting. Recruit adventurers. What is this? Stores allow you to trade and sell your items for copper. Merchants buy items from you... At a greatly reduced price, if you sell something, you may see it appears in the store's inventory at a higher cost. Oh, how nice. What do we have? We have a crossbow that we can sell. Ah, oh, we have some wolf hide. 
Here you go. Wolf hide. Five copper. Medium leather armor. A couple 40 copper. What is padded armor? No, I think we want to keep that. What is this? Hide armor? Nobody wants hide armor. Hide armor is for the weak. I got a couple bows. We don't need a couple bows. I've got a knife. Here, Ayla, have a knife. Despite your pull, you know. You got magic and all that, but it's okay. Calm down, Aerith. We're all gonna be fine. We could hire a level one adventurer for 250 CP. Lost a no uh, party management screen. You can see what your allies are up to. When they aren't in your party, pretty much they're going to be running around and drinking ale, being a general nuisance. It's what adventurers tend to do. Let's see. What does this cost? Ah, oh, I see. Inns allow characters to rest without using camping supplies. Cheap rooms are usually available, but if you have copper to spend, you can consider more expensive options. No, I think I prefer to sleep on the floor than actually pay money. Level 1 adventurer. I accept him for hire. 250 copper points. Ah, we get to create him entirely? What? What? That's amazing. I'm going to go through this really quickly. You're going to be a hu human? Human? A mon? No, I don't want that. Duh. There you go. You're a human. You're meadow folk, ocean folk, savannah folk? No, you're meadow folk, dude. Look at that hair. That, that hair is crazy. What do you want to be? We have a paladin and we have a wizard. Let's get ourselves a rogue. You can do well with a rogue, aren't you? Aren't you? Or a ranger, actually. Because we want a bowman. And a rogue isn't actually a bowman. <laughs> when you actually think about it, it doesn't work very well. Marked prey. Designates a single target as prey, giving the ranger and animal companion damage bonus against the target. Okay, wounding shot. As he or she would with fleeing prey, the hunter aims for a spot that will slow the target enemy's progress, hobbling the target and inflicting raw damage over time. Mm, well, we do hobble it. That could be very good for initial encounters. Let's go for wounding shot. No, wounding shot. Thank you. Oh my goodness, we, oh, we can have an antelope! What, an antelope? Oh, I have superior defense. Oh my goodness, and there's a bear and a boar and there's a lion. You can have a lion? What in the world? I want, you, you're trying to, you make me decide between an antelope and a lion, and quite frankly, I'm going to go with the antelope, because, oh my goodness, antelope companion, your name will be, oh, I get to name him, Norman, Norman the antelope, how brilliant, okay, for this ranger, we're going to put a lot into dexterity, we're going to get a bit of perception, because you need to be perceptive, Ranger. You can't let Norman get out of your sights. He needs to stay with you at all times. If Norman got away, who knows what he could possibly do. It would be terrible if Norman got away. So we're just going to throw random points into random stash. Do you want to be Aider, plus one Resolve, plus one Dexterity? That's good. That's good. That's good. Plus one resolve, plus one intellect, plus one constitution. Yeah, I'm not even not even going for the old backstory. What is this? You are part of the Deadfire Archipelago, consisting of the nations of Nasatak. Dozens of our Marwan settlements and hundreds of lawless pirate infested islands that stretch along the southern sea. Deadfire is home to boreal dwarves, our Marwan and a mixed variety of other races. Deadfire Archipelago is the last stop for anyone headed east. A multitude of monstrous sea creatures infest the ocean beyond, making travel virtually impossible. You will be the amazing Deadfire Archipelagan Ranger. My goodness. Look at him, he's so gruff. What are you going to be? You can't be an aristocrat. Not acceptable. Are you going to be an explorer or a hunter? Or a raider. Mmm. Mmm. He's totally a hunter. 
That's what he does. This dude and Norman, this dude who doesn't have a name yet, and Norman go around hunting stuff. Norman mostly hunts blades of grass, which aren't actually very difficult to catch. Oh, no. Look at that beard! It's so gruff and adventurous. My goodness. It doesn't fit you and Norman. That, that I like. Look at that. It's like a Riker beard. You, my friend. Oh, no mohawks. Absolutely no mohawks for you. That is not who you are, my friend. You need to understand that you, as Riker, second only to Picard, really are not supposed to... Uh, where was I even going with that? I completely forgot what I was saying halfway through. Why do I do that so often? What shall your colors be? Your colors shall be the deep green of the forest and the dark blues of the ocean. And the dark blues of the ocean. You are truly one with nature, Riker. After having lost Picard so long ago, you have truly become... Oh, look at that. That's what he looked like as a young man. Before he went adventuring, he was a beautiful creature. Afterwards, he became William Riker. It's terrible. You need... Whoa. Uh, let's just move on. Um, his name is William Riker. Riker! We shall do amazing things together. Oh lord, uh, the audio is taking a small dump. I'm going to, uh, reset the situation, and then I'm going to return. Hey, welcome back. Um, yeah, the audio decided to take a little, uh, dive earlier, but it's okay, I fixed it. We've still got Norman. Norman the Antelope! And Riker, the amazing ranger. And our current goal is is actually to sleep on the floor. That's actually our goal. Hey, our goal. Well ah, hello. I would like... I would like to sleep on your common area. You literally cost me zero copper point. I don't like it when terrible visions come in my dreams. Your sleep is restless and fervid, assaulted by hisses and whispers. Blanketed with a suffocating anxiety, you open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of Gilded Vale's gallows tree, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face is shriveled inward like molding fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. That's not something you want in your face. Suddenly, her head snaps up, and her eyes open, and they are empty. And Behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts in a gust of rancid air. She speaks a word. Watcher! Yeah, I'm watching, all right. I mean, it's kind of hard not to when you're all up in my face, girl. You jolt awake, the foul smell of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Mmm, brilliant word choice. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember her. See you remember seeing her decaying face as when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. Though it fills you with a new queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm she is truly dead. Are we going to go poker with our spear? Does Mike still have a spear? He does still have a spear. How ridiculous, Mike. Got yourself a kobold spear, and that's all you've been using, just poking things a bit with your little toothpick. Not much more than a toothpick with a piece of flint tied to the end. That's really what kobolds like to use. Oh, I'm sorry. Zaurips. They're kobolds. They're totally kobolds. It's just a lie! Hey guys, what's up? 
Yeah, you don't want to mess with us now, do you? We got a freaking antelope, kid. It's an antelope named Norman. Norman and Riker. Oh, hello, villager. Are you a villager? You're a child? You look quite old to be a child. Papa says the temple is cursed. Yeah, well, at some point I'll have to go through and deal with that curse, won't I? It's what I do. Oh, look. We got a glowy body here. That's not normal. Oh, they do. It has a talk bubble. I don't want to talk to a dead. Hey guys, I'm really sorry about all the technical difficulties surrounding this episode. It's been terrible. But I'm going to explain to you what just occurred, and then we're going to move past it, and we're going to have some fun. Yes! So what just happened was my uh, recording cut out five minutes in and decided not to actually tell me, so I just did an entire discussion with a floating, bloated corpse, and it apparently didn't record. I'm very sorry about that. Brief overview of what was said. I am a watcher. Mike. Mike is a watcher. I'm personally me as an actual IRL human being in real life. Not a watcher. I do watch things, but not... Di difference. It di Look, technicalities. Um, Mike is a watcher, which means that he can look into people's souls and see fragments of who they used to be. Hence all the weird things that were happening with some of the people where we saw weird scenes. It's crazy. She's an animancer who studies the soul. And... We need to go talk to some guy named Mayor, whatever his name is, in a manor somewhere, which I can't remember where. Oh no. Oh lord. And we need to um, talk to him because he's also a watcher and he's going to tell us more about it. Cool. I'm really sorry you guys didn't get to listen to that conversation. Norman is literally crying right now. He's, he's lost it. He doesn't know. But in consolation for that, we're going to go beat up some bandits. Come on, Mike. Let, let's go. Mike, William Riker, Aloth, and Norman shall proceed to slay some bandits. Eight hours journey is nothing to Mike. He shall slay some bandits and save a dwarfish cook. Shall be amazing. It'll be brilliant. Just at the exact moment that we actually get to this place. Because eight hours is quite a while. There we go. Okay. Where are you, bandits? We're ready to beat the snot out of you because we came back with friends. Mike is no longer alone. He's no longer going to put up with your jazz. Tenfer, the young dwarf, tenderly at the stew. What? Get him dogs his new cook, please. Me 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 me. All that stuff. Okay. Norman and Mike, you need to get up there and intercept everyone who is coming down. What is this? Arcane Assault unleashes a bolt of magic energy from the Grimoire that inflicts raw damage and dazes targets in the area. Or we use one of our Fan of Flames. What is this? Oh, that's not exactly going to work for this situation. What else do we got? We have Dazzling Light, Attacks Reflex, Overwhelms Anyone in the Area, Leaving Them Dazed, Sunless Grasp, Does Cold Damage, oh, I, I, oh, when they touch him, Summons Three Spell Missiles that batter the target, inflicting crushing damage. Now that's, <laughs> that is what I like to hear. And William Riker is going to do a wounding arrow against this bandit. And these two are going to come up and intercept the offensive bandits. Oh, look at the damage! Look at the damage! Next. What, what do we do next? Crucible of the Soul. The Watcher unravels the vital essence of his or her enemies, giving endurance, gaining endurance in the process. Not quite yet, Mike. Your powers of the Watcher are not yet necessary. For now, we're going to have to deal... Come on, Mike. Use righteous... I'm going to trust that you're going to use that. Use your righteous weapon against that bandit. 
He's going to go in and hit that bandit some more, and let's see what you've got. Can you do another battering missile against someone? Save Norman from the evil creatures. Oh my goodness, he just got wrecked so bad. Oh, we're wrecking everything. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Alice, get up close and do another one of your battering missiles because they're amazing. Oh! Oh, he just got eviscerated. Look at that. He's not even a person anymore. He's dead. Oh, my goodness. Let's go loot the corpses. Ho, ho, ho. Got a hatchet, small shield. Ooh. Silver fennings. Caro Galan. Oh, it's an effect thing. Minus two intellect, four fatigue, minus ten might, plus two perception, plus two focus on hit. Made from a sacred and uncommon plant that grows deep in Argolan. <laughs> Karagolan is a name given to a mixture typically used solely for ceremonial purposes or else by warriors going into important battles. It is said to open one's awareness to one's place in the world, raising one's ability to recognize and react to threats. That must increase our reflex. How amazing! We'll bring as much stuff as we can, but I don't want that disgusting stuff right there. Nobody wants that stuff. What do we got here? Sveth. Oh, so many words. I don't want to read your so many words right now. There we go. How about this? What do we got here? We got a hood, a cape, oh, can, oh, can Mike wear a cape? I want Mike to wear a cape so bad. Mike. We need to enter your inventory, and you need to wear a cape. Does it show up? Please say it shows up. It doesn't show up. Oh, nope. Nope. Uh, this game gets a 3 out of 10. Uh, capes do not actually appear when you put them on players. By the flame! Thank you, thank you, thank you! I thought I'd been stuck cooking for these ignorant weasels for the rest of my life! Or until they were bored of me, I suppose, because they would have gutted you like a little pig, wouldn't they? Uh. Did Pasca send you? She must be beside herself. I must be back at once. But listen, the next time you're in Gilded Vale, make sure you drop by the Black Hound. I'll let her know what you've done for me, and I'm sure she'll do right by you in turn. I've earned reputation, yay! I think I get what reputation is, it's reputation. Yes. Oh, to be back at my oven again. Go do your thing, dwarf. Well, we've done a good thing today, guys. We've done a great thing. We've just saved a dwarf. Amazing. Well, and we leveled up, but we'll leave the leveling up for next time because it's already running a little over for this episode despite all of the terrible technical issues. So, next time, we're going to go find this male... whatever his name is, in a manor somewhere, because he's a watcher, and we're going to talk to him, and we're going to be like, hey, we're a watcher too, and he's going to be like, we have so much in common, let's be bros, and we're going to be bros together, and it's going to be amazing. Cool. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe. Again, sorry for the technical difficulties. I will try to make sure that they are fixed by the next time we uh, record Pillars of Eternity. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>